Qualcomm Ventures as an organization has been around for about 20 years globally. Uh, Indian practice was started in 2007. Uh, we represent strategic interest from Qualcomm. So we are very, very excited about areas uh, where Qualcomm Corporation uh, is investing in. So this includes today, uh, obviously, the transition to 5G. All of us uh, around the world are super excited about 5G. We're also very interested in Internet of Things. You know, whether it is drones or factories or your cars or your doorbell, very excited about, about that area. Applied AI is the third area we are very interested in. Uh, think about many of your mundane problems being quickly solved by computers and not just computers that sit in the data center, but your cell phones that sit at the edge of the networks. Those areas are very interesting to us. Auto is another category which is very interesting to us. So we invest in these uh, very technically oriented areas around the world. Uh, so Qualcomm Ventures is a stage agnostic uh, investor. Uh, we invest from Series A onwards uh, in a stage of a company. In terms of our dollar size, our average dollar size ends up being three to five million dollars. But in later stages of company, it goes up uh, depending on the round of the company. Uh, we have a seed program uh, in India through Qualcomm, uh, I think you know QDIC, Qualcomm Design in India Challenge. And then in addition to that, this year, uh, we're very actually proud. We piloted a program in India. Uh, it's really meant for women entrepreneurs in technology. Uh, this was our first trial. Uh, we had 14 entrepreneurs go through a six-month cohort very, very focused on solving key technology issues, uh, that, you know, sp specifically in this six month window. And uh, this provided them an opportunity to grow the business from seed and get some ideas related to building a team, building technology, building a product. So I would say these are our three vehicles uh, in India. What we did in India, uh, Pyle, we also focused on some of the national problems that India focuses. And we call them starting from dairy defense to transport and also getting uh, the mass population of India to use cell phones. I'll give you a couple of uh, case studies. Uh, if you remember uh, the launch of uh, the 4G network in India, that really enabled the mass population of India to get onto the phone. And that was the 4G feature phone. That 4G feature phone was very, very interesting because it enabled the internet experience in local languages. And that was enabled by our portfolio company, Reverie. I don't know if you, if you know the name. Initially, it was a standalone company uh, with Qualcomm's help in both in India and San Diego, really got that ingredient ready for a smartphone reference design platform. And that then made its way into the phone. Uh, Stellab falls in this dairy category. We looked at IoT and we said, let's look at scalable companies. Uh, what Stellab did was it used technology to ensure that the milk hygiene is maintained from the time you collect the milk from the farmer all the way till the time it comes to the supermarket or your grocery store. So it's a technology enabled play to maintain health along the way. And this particular company again worked with us uh, through, it actually also worked with our QDIC program uh, in India and also again worked with our teams in Europe and US. Is we invested in a company called Zineer. Zineer is in uh, the business of ensuring you can manage your infrastructure, 5G infrastructure, 4G infrastructure, all the way back to your legacy infrastructure for a telco. This company has technology built out of Bangalore and it's selling to telecom operators around the world. And with Qualcomm's help, it has gotten uh, the technology has matured and also has had introductions to customers from around the world. So this is a great way where, you know, we are trying to help build infrastructure as tel telecom operators get ready to take on new projects such as 5G uh, around the world. As you see, the theme is emerging technologies across all of them, uh, whether you looked at uh, Geo or you look at the case studies that I talked about. We have companies in India like Bounce, which is a micro mobility company for last mile scooter. We have a company called Shadowfax, which is again last mile logistics. All of these companies are really using emerging technologies to solve scalable problems. So uh, if you mean the diversity, if it is in terms of check size, yes, it is in terms of check size here. But it, in terms of the unification for all of these companies, Pyle are really strong entrepreneurs. And hence, what you'll find is our focus has been on 
the, the sector that I mentioned. So 5G, where Geo is building the infrastructure. In case of IoT, you have Stell Labs, you have a company called Idea Forge, which builds drones in India, right? Bounce, which again, IO, using IoT for smart mobility in the, in the last mile. Then we have companies like Zineer, again, using uh, technology to solve uh, really hard issues for telecom infrastructure. Uh, you know, I think we were fortunate. Uh, we exited a reverie through a sale um, to actually ended up being a sale to Geo before our Geo mm -hmm. investment. Uh, they, and then other exits we have found uh, in India have been through secondary sales. I think there'll be different methods uh, of exit for portfolio companies, whether it is M&A through Indian or international buyers, or if it is listing in India or outside, or our traditional method of the secondary sale, that those have been the four ways to exit. If you look at the companies that exited even in the US market, they, they've taken time to mature. Um, it's not a two, three year phenomena. Uh, on the lower side, it's been a five to six year uh, phenomena of exit. In our portfolio in the US, uh, we exited uh, Zoom through an IPO this year. And Zoom is a 10 year old investment. So for us, um, the strategy, so our, uh, you know, investment in, for example, Zinear is an investment that will help with the 5G deployment. And so it starts even prior to 5G network being rolled out. It also helps with 4G or 3G network deployment or issues related to OPEX. So for us, the thesis is that we need to get ready and we need to start building those companies. Uh, so we have also announced uh, a 5G global fund. Out of that 5G global fund, we would invest in companies that would have network transformation technologies. Uh, it would have use cases for 5G, and we are actively investing in that area uh, around the world. We're not waiting for the network to get ready because we know it will get ready, and we want the companies to be ready with the product when the network is, and not the other way around. You'll be actually surprised. So the, we went through a dark tunnel uh, from March. I think when we entered March, we just thought uh, we don't know where the end of this tunnel is. And the dark tunnel happened and uh, lasted through May uh, and June. Uh, after that, I think uh, the venture activity came back. Uh, it came back initially, we all, you know, initially came back in existing portfolio companies. And post that, it came back in new deal activity. So even if you look at our numbers uh, in India, you will see a pickup in uh, our fiscal year Q3. You know, companies that were not doing well before COVID, they faced harder times during COVID. So that was one category of companies which already uh, had some issues. Uh, the issues got worse during COVID. Other companies who are doing okay or who are doing well, but they faced headwinds in COVID. So this is related to retail or travel. Uh, you know, the business just went away, right? Uh, and the third, uh, which flourished in COVID, right? So for them, it was a tailwind. So I would classify our portfolio in those three cases. Uh, and so the first set of companies, uh, which were not doing well, uh, which suffered harder, we, we all collectively as investors at the table tried to help the company and figure out a way. The COVID headwind companies, the travel as well as retail, um, those companies went through the dark tunnel and then came out of that. Again, some of them needed support. Uh, they came out of that. And now that you're seeing pick up, at least in some aspects uh, of retail, some aspects of travel and around the world. So companies who had exposure, uh, which was a little bit geographically diversified, they've been able to come back. The third set of companies that have, you know, it's been a tailwind have been companies like Zoom. They have just taken off. Right. Uh, for Zoom, India is is this. I think our user base in India is number two after US. Um, so it's huge. So I would say that has been the classification uh, of our portfolio. So yes, we have seen some that have not done well, but a bulk of our portfolio uh, has actually come out of this pretty strong. So I think right now we have the infrastructure laid out, right? So the devices are uh, out there. Our networks are also laid out. Uh, we will have, and we'll have 5G um, that will come out. So I think that solves a big problem in terms of delivery of software and consumption of software. And I use software as a generic term 
software could be an e-commerce site, software could be a SaaS software, right? So, uh, but what we have now is capability um, to deliver that piece of software and ability to consume it. And the third most important, ability to pay, right? Ability to pay <laughs> digitally, uh, which makes it easier uh, for companies to collect. So I think those three, those three are being laid out. Our habits changed fire during pandemic. And what I mean by that is we learned to live, play, learn, and work at home. Some of the sectors, so super excited about infrastructure buildup, right? So whether it's the operator or companies that will help build out that network, whether it's SD-WAN company, whether it's network transformation companies, I think great opportunity, not just in India, around the world. Mm-hmm. Great opportunity in healthcare, again, around the world. You know, everybody is now used to this. Uh, great opportunity in enterprise technology for the home. And then education, <clears throat> I think, is uh, is also phenomenal. It will be uh, across the world as well. So I think these sectors will take off from uh, from my my vantage point. 